Alive and alert on the north side of the dirty that you man. D Real coming at you with another B Real with D Real, where edutainment is what I do. I haven't come at y'all with a Black Panther topic in a couple videos. So uh just to let y'all know, you know, we still we st it's it's still T'Challa is a necessity, not a accessory. It's still recast T'Challa. It's still dead T'Challa was a scroll. Now, what kind of T'Challa video am I going to bring to y'all today? I am so glad you asked. Huh. You know what? I ain't gonna tell you yet. What I am going to ask you though, yes, here comes that part, to do what you always do for me. Comment, like, subscribe, and share the Be Real with D Real page so that when new material comes out, you get it if you're digging with a brother shoveling. Put some dirt in my bucket. Comment, like, subscribe, share. It's right here. Now, what we are always hearing about is the beef, the conflict between Namor and T'Challa, Atlantis and Wakanda. How did that beef get started? How did that animosity occur? And a lot of people who don't read comic books are going to tell you that the start of that beef, or I ain't going to say people that don't read comic books. I'm just going to say people who aren't in the know. I guess that's the best way I could put it without sounding condescending. Anyway. Here's what most people, when you ask that question, here's where most people send you. They send you somewhere here, like this. The history between Wakanda versus Atlantis. We already know that's a casual. We already know that's people who don't read comic books because they go straight to the cinematic version. Well, the beef started when, when Namor swam up the channel and was bothering Queen Ramonda and Shuri, and, and it was on after that. It was on after that. But for those of you that have a little bit of knowledge, a little bit of understanding about comic books, your go-to is this one. Yeah, Phoenix Force infused Namer. Phoenix Force infused Namer. Say that fast five times. Phoenix Force infused Namer. Phoenix Force infused Namer. Phoenix Force infused Namer. Phoenix Force infused Namer. <laughs> anyway, flooded Wakanda, killing thousands, and hence inciting the beef between Namor and T'Challa. That's what most people are at with it. Okay. Let's give you something a little different. Let's give you some edutainment. A lot of y'all ain't even aware this comic book existed. 1980, Defenders, number 84. And this is volume one of Defenders. Battle Royale, double entendre. <laughs> Battle Royale. Now, within the confines of this comic book, um, Namor is already at that place where he's like, I hate surface people and, 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 and we at war with him. But he still sends some of his men to buy goods from not so upstanding Wakandan citizens. I just break it down to you. Here in the comic, we see Atlanteans meeting with Wakandans. Giving them goods, right? Oh, Atlantean, we had no easy task this time. T'Challa's security forces caught one of our men last night. Our risk is greatly increased. So Namor knows that his people are receiving stuff from Wakanda, and these Wakandans are not diplomats. They are thieves. Mm. 
lot a lot of trash talking goes on back and forth between the Atlanteans and the Wakandans. And I'm like, man, you can't be talking no trash and you got a fishbowl on your head and you needed to stay alive. You should be humble, <laughs> as Kendrick Lamar said. <laughs> Bottom line, they draw down on them. Like, uh, what's up? We're going to deal with y'all. See, I mean, you know, read it right there for yourself. Don't care nothing about your political problems. <laughs> we want our stuff. So here's what happens. Wazira, king of thieves. So they're making dealings with Wakanda thieves. Dusting them off. Like, like we would expect T'Challa to do. See, should have been talking that trash. Got kicked in your face. Now you ain't got no water source. And so this guy runs and leaves some of his boys on the surface. So now what do we have? Diplomatic prisoners. See, there's an Atlantean. He's dusting them off. So his men, I don't know, they're wearing white. Are those hot toots? Are those, I mean, what is that? I, you know what I'm saying? How, just Wakandan security forces? Who are they exactly? I don't know. And the vehicle's submerging. Ain't nothing T'Challa can do about that. At least not right now, Jakonga. They got some names, don't they? And so T'Challa decides to go in pursuit of the Atlanteans himself because he doesn't know if those smugglers have been stealing Wakandan state secrets and are selling those secrets to Atlantis. So T'Challa is acting in trying to protect the secrecy of an already secret nation. Down, down, down to Atlantis he goes. The Atlanteans are like, ooh, here come a vehicle. I'm going to go meet him myself. They take him on board. So he's like, ooh, okay. Namor pulls up. Who going to hop out the vehicle? T'Challa hops out the vehicle. He's like, yo, T'Challa, what's going on, man? You cavil about law and retribution, but this is Atlantis and I am the law. He don't like that. T'Challa, you know T'Challa don't like that. I'm royalty too. You ain't telling me nothing. So he's like, look, this cat's arrogant. I don't even like him. He tosses something at Namor. Namor's tied up. Some of that clever... Wakandan technology. See, even back then, T'Challa had tricks. And even though it's probably not going to hold Namor very long. Exactly. And he's going to flood the chamber. What is T'Challa's answer to Namor flooding the chamber? Hmm, I'm prepared. Why would you not go into water and not be prepared? And he finds a large vent to go through. Resourceful as ever. Always has been. And blocks his escape. I mean, blocks anybody pursuing him from escaping. Hallway is airfield. And of course, this is a hallway that contains prisoners? No, not a prisoner. Well, kind of. Man, see, they don't have to think of something else to put on their head besides glass because it gets kicked open really easy. They suffocate, so they got to go find water. It's Bruce Banner. I'm going to wake Bruce Banner up. And Bruce Banner's going to do what? Yeah. Turn into the Hulk. 
and just start housing because this is Savage Hole. That's probably not what Namor needed, but he can use that. So he's like, ain't no reason for me to be here. Small fleet approaching from the Panthers Island. Uh-oh. Wild Hulk is on a rampage. Dang, you got your hands full, Namor. Trying to calm Hulk down. Hulk's not listening. They go through the wall. And into the water. Now the Wakandan fleet is moving in. And they come and pick up their king. And they retreat with their king. Now here. Wakandans are monitoring what's going on where their king is at. The generals are confirmed now if T'Challa died in the act of war. They ain't gonna kill T'Challa. So, Namor wants Hulk to calm down. Right. Hulk ain't calming down for sh Hulk ain't calming down. And Hulk leaps out of Atlantis, literally, and into the air. But the Wakandans think that Atlantis has launched a missile at him. So what do the Wakandans do? Yep. <laughs> launch a missile back. And it ain't just any old missile. It's a nuclear. And now he's letting them know. Wakanda's at war. He's like, what? Why are we at war? I was just trying to Man, y'all, y'all overreact. <laughs> and the enemy projectile has vanished from the screen, of course, because it wasn't a projectile, it was the Hulk. So now what he's going to do is talk to Prince Namor. And tell Namor about the missile. His response, tell me where the missile is. And naturally, Namor intercepts the missile and sends it flying at Khyber Island, where Wakanda was doing business uh, with the Atlanteans. But that's over. It's a shame that the world's first awareness of Wakanda shall be linked with an atomic explosion. And it is a shame that Prince Namor and myself have become antagonists on our first encounter. The lesson is painfully obvious for my own trusted officers acted just as the Submariners did. Namor was not to blame, yet I acted in self-righteous anger, leading to near disaster. The smuggler's retreat is gone, marking the end of the first period of contact between my kingdom and T'Challa's. But the relationship between us is just beginning. For now, we must negotiate the release of my men. I'll never rest while they are being held prisoner. And if satisfaction is not forthcoming, all Wakanda shall feel the wrath of the avenging sun. Though I truly hope for peace, I fear that T'Challa and I are destined to clash again. If so, let the panther beware, imperious Rex. That was 1980, y'all. 1980. Flash forward to the 2000s and AVX. That's a full 20 years before this beef. But maybe this beef was considered too minor or too weird. It, 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 it did continue in the next issue and the defenders teamed up with the Black Panther. And when uh, Namor came to uh, Dr. Strange's Sanctum Sanctorum and saw the Black Panther there, he's like, oh, y'all betrayed me and quit. But this is a man that rules a whole nation. Next time somebody asks you, how did the beef start? 
between Atlantis and Wakanda. You know now. This is the first recorded beef between Atlantis and Wakanda. If somebody knows of an earlier beef between Atlantis and Wakanda, please let me know in the comments. But I am pretty sure this is the first ever beef between Atlantis and Wakanda. Entertainment is what I do. That's it, y'all. Fret not I will be coming at you with another one of the mother ones. And until I do, yeah, y'all, be good and be good to each other.